Hey everybody, this is TJ Miller from Action Reality Martial Arts. Uh, we just started doing a sword fighting class with the New Jersey Renaissance Fair. When I'm not teaching martial arts, one of the things I'm doing is uh, I'm one of the owners of the New Jersey Renaissance Fair. And I do a, a sword fighting show with my really good friend uh, John Williams. You can see a couple videos with him uh, for the European martial arts and sword fighting. Um, there's a couple moves from the Filipino martial art of a scrimma that I think would really help you work on some of your, uh, your sword fighting stuff. We started with our students the other day going over uh, Moulin uh, with a sword, which is when you're fighting. It's that turn, you see, you can also figure eight. You can moon around your head. Uh, and there's a couple of these moves from the Filipino martial arts with the stick that I think will really help you. Uh, a lot of the Filipino martial arts, even though we tend to think of martial arts as something that comes from Asia, a lot of those martial arts are highly influenced by Spanish rapier and dagger fighting from the long period of time when the Spanish occupied the Philippines. So fighting is kind of fighting wherever you go over the world, and there's stuff to learn from everywhere. So I'm going to show you these moves, uh, you can practice them, and it'll help you to strengthen your wrist, and it'll help you to get those nice fluid movements with your sword that'll look nice when you're either acting for the stage, and these also have very uh, nice combat, combat applications as well, so I'm going to show them to you right now. There's three of them, and you can train them, and if you do them a lot, it'll really help you strengthen your, strengthen your wrist and get some flexibility to do some really cool stuff. Okay, the first move we're going to do with the stick is what we call a redondo, and what I'm doing is I'm striking down onto the hand of the person that's going, and when you're holding your stick or your rapier, depending on what the case may be, uh, I like to keep my thumb and my pointer finger as a constant, okay? My middle finger also gives a little bit more support, but these last two fingers are more, more loose and flexible. So my stick turns in that circle that's created by my hands. Uh, when you're doing this, you can do repetitions. You can also do this with your footwork. If you do it on advance, do it on a retreat, okay? And I'm kind of simulating here when I'm hitting my arm, I'm simulating uh, a checking hand happening. So there's your redondo. You can let it spin. And on that last one, really get that nice whoosh. Make sure you do both sides. I'll do this transition with a stick. You wouldn't want to do this with a blade. But I'll take my hand here and then find the end. So it's important. Make sure you practice both hands. Your circles can be various sizes, smaller to bigger, and that is your redondo. The next move in these three move series is what we call a fluete. Now with this one, I'm striking up into the hand, okay? So my stick is coming here, okay? And I'm letting this turn. This is very much a moulinet. It's just a different term. Uh, so I'm here, boom, you can let this turn. And that last one, I kind of let come up over my shoulder. You can come to that side too, it's a little weird. Don't whack yourself in the head. But get to where you can turn that stick. And the strike is coming out here. And that is your fluette. Next move is an abanico. Uh, abanico means fan, okay? So if you take your stick like this and do this, this is pretty much the same motion, but I move my hand down, okay? Now, I can abanico this way, but a lot of times what I'm gonna be doing is striking out, out in front of me. And I want the end point where that hits to be passed the end point from the other side. Um, if you notice here, my elbow moves a little bit, but not a lot. You gotta get a lot of flexibility in this wrist. This is really good to strengthen that. So that's your abanico, okay? And you can go to various levels. You can go high, low. One way I used to train this is I would do 40, then 40, then 30. 30, and you will start to feel a nice burn in your forearms from doing that, okay? So that is your abanico. Now once you have those three moves down, you can start putting together, okay? Doing a little bit of movement, and then what I'm doing is I'm trying to be able to do the strikes and keep my feet moving at the same time, okay? Uh, you want your footwork and your legs to be able to work without thinking about it too much. That's very important. Uh, remember for your, for your rapier uh, work that you want to be able to have that turn. The more you play 
And practice with your weapon, the more natural it's going to look when you're trying to create the illusion of violence in stage combat. Um, and in a real fight situation, it's going to let you be more comfortable with performing your moves and stuff. Uh, when you're holding the escriba stick, there's a couple different ways to do it. I like to leave two or three fingers at the bottom, so I have what we call my puño. Okay? I can strike with this. I can also disarm. People have various different sizes where they put their puño. Some people put a whole hand. Some people choke up a little bit more. Some people don't like it because you can get stripped. Leaving that there, I can still strike with it even though I'm not really giving them a lot to work with. So my personal preference is like two or three fingers down at the bottom. Okay? And then you can put those guys together.